The school I run is not perfect, but I believe something special is happening at the school. Young people are opening up to adults more. It feels more like a community. So what's happened? Before I talk about what's happened, I just want to outline a little bit about our beliefs, our values, what we stand for, what we're trying to do. Look, we believe that qualifications are important, but they're not the be-all and end-all. We believe that young people are so much more than the numbers and the letters they receive at the age of 16. We believe that every young person should feel a sense of belonging, feel part of a community. And we believe that the fundamental aim of a school is to provide young people with the keys to success for the rest of their lives and whatever avenue they choose to follow. Now, I believe that perhaps in recent decades, the definition of a good school has been gradings, league tables, various percentages, and, and these things are important. We don't accept that that's a fundamental aim of the school. And in fact, there is a danger in beginning to think about people as percentages and pieces of data. I recently read a devastatingly brilliant poem by the children's poet Michael Rosen called The Data of Landed. It goes as follows, the data have landed. First they said they needed the data about the children to find out what they're learning. Then they said they needed data about the children to make sure that they are learning. Then the children only learned what could be turned into data. Then the children became data. But I think there's a warning with regards to thinking of not just young people, but, 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 but people in general as noughts and ones and percentages. Like many other educators across the country, I worry about the narrowing of the curriculum. I worry about the disappearance of creative arts and subjects like design and technology in the arts. Why? Because actually, they breathe life into school. Shouldn't young people be making, doing, singing, dancing, they're the things that, that bring a real colour into schools. But on a more practical level, as we move into an era where the labour market is becoming increasingly automated, I wonder whether or not we do our young people a disservice by mechanically and robotically preparing them for exams. You see, the people who are going to change the world in the future are those young people who can express themselves. They're the persuaders, the influencers. But more importantly, they know right from wrong. And sure, A-stars are important, but we're in the business of producing A-star people. We believe that achieving those goals start with a conversation at a very basic and fundamental level. I want you to picture the scene. A, a lad outside a classroom, been kicked out again. Uh, another scrap, another detention, perhaps another cautionary tale. And along comes a teacher. Ask the young lad, how's your day going? Well, not very well, as you, you can see. The lad steals himself for another, another telling off. But this teacher's different. Ask him how his day's going. Uh, and in that conversation, which could have only really have lasted a minute, the lad talks about his aims, his fears, his desires, what he wants to achieve in the future. The adult's the first person in that child's life. He didn't laugh when the child says he could go to university. And that minute was transformative for that young person's life. Now, I wasn't the teacher in that scenario. I was a lad, and it was in that, that moment, in that minute, that I actually understood the power of conversation and what it could do to transform a life. One of my particular favourites in terms of starting a conversation is asking this question, how is your day going? A bit about that in a moment. It's probably worth pausing at this stage and reflecting about the world in which our young people inhabit today. 
because I believe it's quite different to even when I was a young person. They live in a social media age, an age where they're often projecting idealised and imaginary versions of themselves to invisible audiences, uh, often without filter. And some of the words that are put on are often lacking civility. So actually conversations, face-to-face conversations, can actually be one of the few human contacts that young people have where people can actually investigate well, what drives you, what motivates you. So I'm a huge fan in asking people how their day's going. But starting a conversation is not as easy, starting and sustaining a conversation is not as easy as just saying, you know, how's your day going and, you know, you'll, you'll start chatting. One of our barriers is that we're British. And, and so when people ask you that question of how's your day going, you typically just respond, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> you know, in fact, you find the question quite weird. Um, but you have to be prepared to prod and probe because we respond in that way, whether we've won the lottery or whether we've, in fact, lost the winning lottery ticket. You have to be prepared to sustain it. And I'm a firm believer that actually starting those conversations can be revelatory. I can remember having a conversation with a 13-year-old girl a couple of years ago um, and asked her how, how a day was going. I like to position myself in particular places in the school uh, every single day. And, and she literally curled up into a ball and was extremely tearful. And she was crying. So we had to pursue and continue the conversation. And what emerged was she was very upset. Mum and Dad were arguing at home. Dad had lost a job. Some quite nasty things have been put on social media about her. And what she started to do was cut herself quite deeply, actually, as a means of relief, relieving the tension of her life. And what became really clear in that conversation is just the complexities of young people's lives today. But also, it really brought home that we as a school really have to do something about it. And so we've looked at the curriculum and looked at additional support workers in school, but we're nowhere near, you know, we're only scratching the surface. But I'm not sure that that would have been something that was necessarily on people's radar unless you start the conversation. And importantly, unless you have the bravery and the courage to actually act on the feedback that you receive. So going back to this point of sustaining a conversation, I'm a massive music fan. I really enjoy music. Uh, I'm a particularly, I particularly enjoy hip hop music. And it's, it's, there's nothing more uncool for a child than their head teacher to know what they're listening to. It's, it's, it makes them really reassess their, their status as, as a young person. There's a really serious point to that because when you think back to the teachers that made a difference in your lives, you know, perhaps have a picture in your mind of a teacher who really made a difference. Was it not the ones that knew you at some deeper level? They knew about your interests, they knew about your hobbies, they cared about what you were going to do on the weekend. And it's actually those conversations that sustain conversations over time and build relationships. One of the great privileges of being a head teacher is that you have conversations that last weeks years, you know, where you revisit the same student perhaps two weeks later and you haven't, you know, you continue a conversation. Having those there are really important. Those who know me will know that I love to challenge people when they don't ask me how I'm doing. So you'll often, you'll ask, you'll ask someone, how, how's your day going? And they'll tell you about their day uh, and you're waiting for them to ask you about your day. So I love to say that I'm fine just in case you're wondering. It's actually a light-hearted way of continuing a conversation, you know, but it also models the type of behaviours that you want to see. And this is perhaps my favourite question, the one that I like to ask probably the most, and that is, what's the highlight of your day? Now, look, it's, it's wonderful if you talk to a child and they're able to list five or six brilliant things that have happened in their day. But it's equally revealing 
if you speak to a child, they can't give you a highlight. They can't remember anything in their day that's actually been a highlight. It's actually revelatory, and it reminds you that conversations can reveal things about the school. I'm a real passionate believer that children are experts in their learning. They sit through thousands of hours of lessons. They experience hundreds of different teachers. So I believe they know a thing or two about what successful learning looks like. And I think if you've got the bravery and the courage to engage and be prepared to act on that, you can actually have some quite transformative results. When I think about one of the practical things that have emerged as a result of just asking this question, I think one of the common themes when I was talking to youngsters last year in particular was they often talk about wanting a bit more control, a bit more autonomy over what they do. You know, it's a motivating factor for people. And you know, as a result of that, we introduced a Thursday elective system. So on Thursdays, you know, year seven, so they're about 11 and 12, they're able to choose uh, from a range of different things that they can do, be it Mandarin or coding or lacrosse or photography. And what's been really quite um, heartening is to see young people develop as a result of having that choice, a bit of choice and autonomy from the, 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 the girl who now sees a career path in becoming a car mechanic to the lad who now is a chess wizard. That's really been you know, something that we wouldn't have touched upon had we not engaged in the conversation. Now, I guess in conclusion, and the point of what I'm saying is that I really believe that you can change a school, a community, and, and dare I say the world, by starting a conversation. You know, if there is any key point to this, it's for you to reflect on the change that you want to see in the world. And your contribution to that change can be as simple as starting a conversation. And what better way to start a conversation than to ask somebody how their day's going? Thank you very much.